Good morning, everyone. This is Mel Clemente, your presenter for today's webinar. I'd like you to welcome you to this week's webinar. We'll be talking about best practices on how to validate your forms input. So we're going to talk about lots of validation today. I hope you're ready, as I am, and I can't wait to present today. So for um, today's demos and our topic for today is going to, like I said, focus on validation. So I'm going to talk about uh, what the types of validation, required fields, um, validation based on patterns and data types, different data types, and how you can you can implement validation in your forms viewer forms, right, to be specific. And we're going to do that by using this technique that we call centralized logic. And I'm going to show you how to do just that. And we are going to store those conditions, those validation conditions in an XML data source. So um, things are going to be data driven and it's a lot easier to maintain, um, especially if you have uh, changes every now and then. And for easier or for usability, for users to easily um, know where they are uh, where the data is invalid and whatnot, we are going to provide good go but there. And all this is going to be easier if we're going to use an XML template part or what we call XTP. So we are going to provide you with a sample with an XTP that uh, just provides you with a validation that you need in your InfoPath forms. All right, so for the types of validation, um, you're out of the box InfoPath. Uh, validations, just naming a few here. Um, first and foremost, you're, you want to check if your form has uh, um, in, has complete data, right? So you're, you're going to have fields that cannot be blank. So you're acquiring, for example, you don't want users to be able to submit a form that doesn't have a name or doesn't have their names in it because you're just requiring that field. And so um, the and go back out of the box functionality just lets you check this box right here to uh, mark that field as cannot be blank, right? So that's for required fields. And uh, you can also use some patterns, for example, for checking uh, invalid email addresses, um, phone number formats, and so on and so, so forth. So InfoPath allows you to specify your pattern for whichever case you want there. And of course, your data types, you want to check for valid formats, for example, for numbers, so that users won't be able to enter um, alpha, you know, uh, numericers or just uh, the alphabet in a number field, uh, things like that. And you don't want them to enter just anything for a date field, for example. So that's about data type. And just the, those are just to name a few, and we're going to show you later what other, um, what other options you have in the designer. And like I said, we're going to use an XML data source to store our conditions. And I'll show you that later. And the purpose of doing so is for you to um, easily maintain your, your conditions because you're storing in a secondary data source, uh, for example, a SharePoint library maybe, that you can just um, download and make your changes and re-upload without having to open your um, template in the designer. So easier maintenance. And then, so here is a, actually a bonus if you want to get fancy or just provide better usage of, uh, to your users, you want to show them or provide them a go button. And this is this only applies though if your form uses tabs like what you're seeing in the screenshot here. And so when something is missing or something is invalid, invalid in that tab, you don't you don't want your users just to look for that field and instead provide go buttons to easily switch to that tab or to that view where the validation errors occur. So this is just an example. And again, we're providing an XTP XML template part so that you can easily add these into your form without going through uh, creating the logic or adding the technique in your InfoPath forms from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example of that in the browser in Forms Viewer. We've got this form built for one of our customers here, and um, I customized, I'm just refreshing the page there. I customized this to work for today's demo. So right here, um, you're, you're going to see some um, highlight fields right there, and that's another way to show users which fields are valid and which are 
just um, optional, I guess, or which fields are required. Or um, in this case, I think we're just checking if a field is empty or not. So um, one other option if you uh, for validation is if you provide a save button, if you want users to be able to save their form without going through validation, you might want to provide buttons for your save and uh, for submit. So saving just allows the form to bypass any validation rules um, while submit is, you know, checks, checks all the validation there before the users are able to finally submit their form. So now if I hit submit there, and we're going to see here all our validation errors. So it says select a property location because this property is everywhere across my tabs. It doesn't show me which tab it is under. But if I start to select um, property there and try to sit again, that error goes away. And here it tells us that the guest tab is missing some fields, the guest name. So if I go there, I'm currently on the billing tab, and if I click go, take to the guest tab, which is really handy. So then I can start filling out this form, right? Um, the miss the missing fields and whatnot. And then when I thought that I'm done with my form, there I just try to submit, and then I just find out that I still have some errors to fix. So that's uh, just a quick overview of what um, validation is. Um, or how it works in Forms Viewer. And let's see. So the XTP that we have, let me open it in the designer here. All right, so it's in um, XTP2 format. You can open it in InfoBath Designer if you wish to customize it further. But um, by default, we're providing a tab uh, technique there. So you can basically, you can maybe even use this in your, uh, in a new form and adapt the tab techniques there if you want your forms to have tabs. We're also providing that as a bonus aside from just validating. So this is the XDP. I'm going to add it in my InfoBath uh, form control. So let me create a new blank filler form. I want to show you adding the XDP from scratch into a blank template. I actually have it already in my custom controls here, but the way to add an XDP, if some of you still don't know, let me just remove that because I added it before. So I went to my custom controls there and then I hit add control template part and I browse to the location of my XDP file, my template part. And um, let's see here. People have questions, just feel free to write them. All right, so validation. I already see, I'm already seeing some uh, some question here from Stacy, and I'm gonna get back to your question in a few here. Okay, so uh, this is my blank form. Let's just call it samples, sample validation form. Cursor's jumping everywhere. Now I'm going to start adding that XTP into my form. And when you add that into your form, you're going to get uh, the guidance text. So instead of providing a separate documentation, we just add it into the form itself for easier um, reference. So let's see here. So it says, if your form does not have key rules yet, simply rename the Kidabra rules that already got added into the form into uh, just Kidabra rules. Because when you add an XTP, the name, the data connection name gets appended with your XTP name. So it's here that we just need to remove that um, underscore validation in the name. And we're done because this is a new form. And if your form already has Q rules, it's already probably published in um, Informs Viewer, then just go through the step, uh, step two here. And it's really easy there. And then select the section that holds the tab uh, calculated value in the go button. So we provide a screenshot there, and this is the one that is telling us to select. And then it says he to add the conditional formatting right here. I'm not 
copy this expression. So add this expression as a conditional formatting. Let me display my rules task pane and select that section in. I'm gonna add a formatting condition. This is gonna show the tab name only once. All right, so the formula for that, the expression, will be the preceding sibling. So if the preceding any preceding tab that is equal to the current tab hide it. We just want to show the tab names once because we'll notice here in our data source, and this is our XML data source, we've got a repeating validation field. And let's just add this into our form later and I'm gonna show you the XML next so we can understand better. So that was step four and actually we're done. We're done modifying. I'm gonna delete this help text and here's our form now. And let's show you the validation XML that we're using. Hold on right here. I think I already have it here in my, All right, note that plus plus. Okay, so we've got some guidance text here, more guidance text in line in the, in the XML file itself. So it says, uh, use this to perform data validation form value. So you'll see if this is our repeating validation field group that has, um, we look at this side by side with my X, X is in here. All right, so we've got the, the type. Type is, where type here, here. Type is used to check the validity of the value. So here we say this X path, the sample required field, um, we specify the type to be required, meaning it cannot be blank, right? And for an email, just say it's email. So you can actually change customize these uh, the values in these parameters. So we call it parameters or in these attributes to your own, just to so you know um, you lever all the namings or all the values in your rules. All right, so valid will return true or false if um, when you run the rule, uh, whatever the result of your uh, rules are. So valid will return true or false and it is true, meaning it, it you know, past validation and um, the opposite. And then your message goes here. So sample required field not and enter a valid email address for an email address field. So Stacy's question was screen tips are not allowed on browser forms. Do you have an alternative idea on how to provide these to users? And this is how we are providing. So you are right that it's not um, supported in browser form. So in this case, we're just showing custom messages via calculated values. So here I have, um, I want to show the custom message to enter in a valid email address if um, if the value entered by the user is invalid. All right, so that's it. Actually, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You specify the type, was, is it a required field, an email, a number, past date, a future date, and valid again returns true or false depending on whether it passed validation, triggers all the rules to return valid, true or false, and then your custom message goes here, okay? And so you save out your XML file and you can reattach it in your resource file right here, or again, if you want it data-driven, store it somewhere in a, in a SharePoint library maybe, and add a data connection in your form that, queries that XML file, okay? And now if we look at the trigger rules in here, this is what um, checks for the validation, right? Because if we look at the validate button down here, it just sets trigger into a value that will run the, uh, those rules, okay? So if we go back to the trigger attribute, then we move on to the value. So first we get the value, and this is all using the key rules command uh, node to pass in the command syntax and uh, get the value. So like right there. So get value XPath is whatever specified in your XML file for that node. And here are your cases, validation cases. So if it's required, if type is required, then valid will return. Um, if the return of that cure rules get value is, uh, is not blank, then valid will return to true right, and false otherwise. So email is just using um, this pattern. So it's string, so this is the same as, if you if you look at that, try to remember that. If, 
I look at it right here. Let me see where I can get that um, InfoPath expression. So, for example, here if I do if I do does not match pattern, and if I look at the third drop down here, I can see all the patterns available to me. For example, if I select email, this is the pattern that I want. The checks for a valid email pattern, and I just want to copy that um, and then use it in my rules. And same goes with phone number. So apparently, you can just use um, backslash D for any digits or for any number, right? And you can you can play around with all the the patterns. You can get crazy with the patterns um, depending on your needs. But for this demo sake, we're we're using the email pattern. And so going back here, this is what we're using for the email address check that exact pattern right there so if uh, the email address field is in that pattern then return valid to true and for number it's just check checks if the return of that curls command is a valid number right for the past date we're using the date diff it's a cure another curls command that uh, allows you to subtract a date from another date value right and uh, you can actually specify if you want the uh, result to be uh, the week, number of weeks, number of days, and whatnot. So in this case, we're um, getting the difference between the date entered in right here, in this field right here, to today's date. We're comparing to find out if it's a past date. All right. So same case if you. Okay, to see how this works. I think I've got everything set up. This is the template part, though. I'm going to close this because I want my XSN right here, the one we just modified. This is the one I wanted to use. And so I'm going to save this and sample validation form and upload it into Forms Viewer. So I've already have uh, I've already uploaded this right here. Now let me just upload a new one for others to see how to easily use Forms Viewer to publish your forms. So let me. So right there, I just um, double clicked on that box, and now I can just easily upload. You can also drag and drop from your Windows Explorer, like do that. Okay, that works too, but I just usually click click here to upload my file. So it's, it's uh, successfully added. Let's go ahead and open the form. And uh, looks like we have another question. Go back to you later. Okay, so let's try this then. Okay, sample field, sample required field not be blank. So again, this sample we're providing tabs for you here so we've got four tabs um, separating the required field email uh, number and the dates so if i try to enter a an invalid email address here right something like that let's see if this works okay so we get that error enter a valid email address well let's do the same for the number so i'm trying to enter an alphanumeric uh, value for a number field so it catches that as well ensure that you have entered a valid number format and finally for our dates here it wants me to enter a sample past date but I'm going to select a future date and the other way around for this future date let's see what we get okay so the conditional formatting rule that we just added um, just makes this dates tab appear only once here otherwise it, we're going to see two rows for the dates tab when we want one because it's you know just the grouping those tab fields um uh, dates dates tab fields okay now let's try to start fixing these validation errors so i want to go to the required tab and enter the sample required this is my demo and let's validate again so we lose that error now Enter a valid email address. So let's just enter my actual address here. Validate again, and you don't you don't want users to just keep validating. And you're going to imagine this in a real world world scenario 
was having to submit and just like what I showed earlier in you know, a live customer demo, uh, customer form, you're going to have a submit button that automatically checks for valid uh, the, the validity of your form before submitting. So users will usually just fill out everything they can in your in the form, you know, going through all that and maybe yeah, up to this point me trying to submit my form and then discovering that I have a, an error there and then fixing it will just uh, don't show any errors to me anymore and then my submit rules will trigger then and yeah and there you have a, a good form that has no errors right so um, I guess that's it it's actually really straightforward that's uh, what I've showed today and Let's see, I'm gonna try to um, try to see if people have questions before I, I on the webinar and talk about Forms Viewer. So I hope Stacy have answered your question. Let me know if you have other questions. And again, we're we're all gonna ship out the XDP as a sample for this for attending the this webinar it's going to you for free and we're, we're publishing this video in YouTube as well for others who are not able to attend and let's just quickly um, recap here so we talked about um, types of validation I've showed you required different patterns and different data types we talked about the number I showed you the number data types and checking if a previous checking for past and future dates right email patterns and the required fields and how things are all the rules are centralized in the validation XML that we're currently storing in the form yeah as a resource file but you can just start in SharePoint. We provided go buttons for easier usage of, uh, you know, people who are filling out the form, takes them to whichever section of the form where the error appears or where the error occurs. And of course, the XDP that we're shipping out for those of you who attended today. Okay, so I think that's enough time for questions. Questions. I don't see any other questions. That's great. Um, go ahead and check out our, our links here. You're gonna you're gonna receive this uh, slide deck as well. Uh, click on the links to to see everything about Forms Viewer. It's uh, our it's our play for converting your InfoBath forms and it. As you can see, it's better performance there, no server post backs, and the easy drag and drop of your template. No need to publish and wait for, you know, like, you know, like a very, very long time for that publishing wizard to finish. And, and also kind of the data web services, such as a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, we integrated or we showed in one of our webinars how to integrate to Google Vision to, um, to return uh, face recognition, uh, face identification, even signatures, um, allowing printing PDF for, uh, and then allowing signature via DocuSign. So it really evolves over time. And even, even I myself, designer, I'm just amazed with all the functionalities and the features that is being developed here with Forms Viewer. So feel free to check that out in our links there. And upcoming training, Microsoft Power Apps and Flow, make sure um, go ahead and check that out as well. If you want to register, there's a link there. And we are going to provide lots of hands-on labs and slides for you to learn all about Power Apps, Microsoft Flow. So you've got your four-day training there and a bonus lab as well. Okay. So, all right. Thanks for uh, attending this webinar. And... Glad to have presented to you today. Take care, everybody.